Okay guys, so this is going to be mine and Brooke's presentation on a hydrocolectomy, which is a surgery that removes and repairs the hydrocele, uh, which is a fluid filled sac surrounding the testicle. Uh, for pre-op, I couldn't really find much. I did find um, male infertility or um, constant pain and discomfort, discomfort as reasons that they would do this type of procedure. The surgical position and safety is going to be supine position with legs slightly apart, arms placed on padded arm boards, less than a 90 degree angle to prevent brachial plexus stretching. If there's a surgical reason to tuck the arms, the elbows are padded to protect the ulnar nerve. Prep boundaries, uh, beginning at the incision site on the scrotum, extending from umbilicus to mid-thigh and bilaterally bilaterally as far as possible. Um, and then for draping in order, you're gonna have a cuff towel under the scrotum to raise it up and then four towels to square off the surgical site and either an adult or pediatric laparotomy drape depending on if you're per performing the procedure on an adult or if it's a pediatric case. And Brooke is going to take us to the next part. Right, so some of the anatomy involved in a hydrocelectomy include the dartus muscle, the spermatic cord, tunica vaginalis, the external spermatic fascia, the cremastric fascia, the internal spermatic fascia, and the testicle. So after local anesthetic is injected into the base of the scrotum, the surgeon makes an anterior incision near the hydrocele. After passing through the dartus and the fascial layers, the hydrocele is exposed and dissected free using sharp and blunt dissection. The contents of the sac are then aspirated and the sac is opened and inverted. A patch is then made between the tunica vaginalis and internal spermatic fascia to hold the testes in place. The sac is then inverted to surround the testes and epididymis. And if present, excess tunica vaginalis is excised at this time. The edges of the tunica vaginalis are sutured behind the testes using interrupted observable suture, and the testes are the testis is resituate, resituated in the pouch within the scrotal sac. A penrose drain is placed within the scrotum and exteriorized through a stab incision, and the scrotal incision is then closed with a running observable suture and wound fluff dressings and a scrotal support are applied. So for this procedure, we may use a minor instrument set, a Penrose drain, and plain lidocaine. The reason for plain lidocaine is because the use of epinephrine in the scrotum and testicles can result in ischemia. And some risk factors involved in this procedure include post-operative surgical site infection and scrotal edema. And our question for you is why do we use plain lidocaine for this procedure?